so clipped lips and clipped palate so both are a conditioned by bath or with the opening of or split the upper lips and rope of the mouth or both and this occurred when the facial uh, features do not develop completely during the pregnancy so a congenital anomaly that is occur as a result of failure of soft tissue or a bony structure to fuse during the embryonic development so involves abnormal opening in the lip or palate that may occur unilaterally or bilaterally and that are readily apparent at the birth so this is the developmentally completely i mean developmental error so in this space or powerpoint we like to discuss about the pathophysiology the risk factor sign symptom diagnostic test treatment and nursing care plan but most important here i'm going to discuss family teaching also feeding and post operative care so the cause include hereditary and environmental factor exposed to radiation or rubella virus chromosomal abnormalities and also teratogenic factors so clipped lips or clipped palate it is a birth defect characterized by incomplete formation of lips or clipped lips or roof of the mouth we call clipped palate so the pathophysiology unknown or unknown etiology there sometimes the risk factor smoking uh, or gestational diabetic and use of certain medication like phenytoin or steroid can cause it also lack of folic during the pregnancy can cause cleft lips or cleft palate so closure of the cleft lips defect the preceded that of the cleft palate and usually performed by the age of three to six months so clipped palate repair is performed sometime between the six and 24 months of age to allow the palate change that take place with the normal growth a cleft palate is closed as early as possible to facilitate the speech development the child with cleft palate is at the risk for developing frequent otitis media and this can result in hearing loss so the most common sign symptom we can see for data collection so a multidisciplinary team approach is known to address the many needs of the child some of these professional include audiologist orthodontist plastic surgeon and occupational and speech therapist the clipped lips can range from a slight notch to a complete separation from the floor of the nose so in this picture we can see a notch in barmion border and b unilateral clipped lips and palate and picture c we can see bilateral 
clipped lips and palate. And picture D, we can see lips is okay, but palate problem is called clip or clipped palate. So the clipped lips opening in the upper lips, right? And size variants. Sometimes it's very small slit or large opening into the nose, into the nose like this. And clipped palate opening the part or all of the palate, roof of the mouth, like this, roof of the mouth. Next go, clipped palate can include nasal distortion, midline or bilateral clip, and variable extension from tubula and also soft and hard palate. So intervention, before to go intervention, if you ask me how we diagnose it, basically prenatal ultrasound can help to diagnose or visual examination of oral cavity at the bath. The treatment is surgical. The question and click for asks like here, in case of clipped lips, surgical management within first three to six months. Some book wrote three to five months. In case of clipped palate, between six to 24 months. Some book wrote clipped palate within the first 12 months. So lips has three letter, I said the a spelling of, I mean, L-I-P-S, lips, three letter. It is three letters, repair three months, easy to remember. And now intervention on nursing care to check the ability to suck, swallow, handle normal secretions, and breathe within the distress without distress. Monitor the fluid and calorie intake daily or monitor the weight. Modify feeding techniques. Plan to use specialized feeding techniques and also special uh, nipple and feeder. So what else? Intervention, we provide referral to many complications associated with clipped lips and clipped palate, which is include feeding, hearing, speech, and dental issues. So hold the child in an upright position and direct the formula to the side and back to the mouth to prevent aspiration important so about the feeding it is important to educate mother or family if patient has a clipped lips use the nipple with a white base or squeeze the cheek together during the feeding if patient has a clipped palate Position infant is upright position. Use bottle with a one way flow valves and especially nipple to increase the flow. Also, um, infant, uh, it is good to frequent feeding. So small, feed small amount gradually or keep the suction equipment and bulb syringe at the bedside. So reinforce the instruction to the parents about the special feeding and suctioning technique. Reinforce, instruct to the parents about the uh, S -E -S -S -R method of feeding. It is enlarge the nipple, stimulate the sucking reflex, Swallow rest of rest to allow the child to finish swallowing and what has been placed in the mouth. 
encourage the parents to express their feelings about the disorder, encourage the parental bonding with the child, include holding and calling the child by name. What else? The post-operative intervention, clipped lips repair, and clipped pellet repair. So clipped lips provide the lip protections, lip protective device may be prescribed, avoid positioning the child on the side of the repair or the front positions because these positions can cause the rubbing of the surgical side on the mattress. So position on back upright and position to prevent airway obstruction by secretion, blood, and tongue. So we um, sometimes in post-operative, we apply petroleum jelly to operate site as described. Utilize elbow immobilize to protect the site. And right. So keep the surgical site clean and dry. After feeding and gentle clean, the suture line of formula or serosanguinal drainage with a solution such as normal saline or de um, designated by agency protocol or procedure. So serosanguinal means serous and um, purulent. Apply antibiotics ointment to the site as prescribed and elbow restain should be used to prevent infant from injury or traumatizing surgical site. So as I told you, utilize the elbow immobilizer to protect the site. Also feeding with the syringe or dropper may be recommended. Avoid use of specifier. Sucking can disrupt suture. So monitor the sign and symptom of infections at the surgical site. Provide analgesics and sedatives on a regular basis as prescribed. Provide comfort measure and especially holding, rocking, and also a parental voice. Clip palette. Feeding are resumed by bottle, breast, or cup, but surgeon preference. Some surgeons prescribe the use of an um, septo syringe for feeding or a soft cup, such as the sippy cup. Oral packing may be secured to the palate or do not allow the child to brush his or her teeth or reinforce the instruction to the parents to avoid offering hard food items to the child, such as the cookies. Soft elbow or jacket restraint rest, rest, rest may be used or to keep the child from touching the repair side, remove the restraint at least every two hours. Also to check the skin integrity and circulations and to allow for um, exercising the arm. What else? The post-operative intervention continue, avoid use of the oral suction or placing the object in mouth such as tongue depressor, right? or use straw, spoon, fork, and specifier. So you have to avoid, you have to educate your patient to avoid, right, to use of specifier because sucking can disrupt the suture. Provide analgesics for pain, reinforce instruction to the parents in feeding techniques and in the care of surgical site, reinforce instruction to the parents to monitor the sign of infections at the surgical site, such as redness, swelling, or drainage. 
encourage the parents to hold the child and also initiate appropriate referrals such as dental referral and speech therapist referral. 